this year we're bagged to uh, 41 feet. Uh, that's what we were told when, when we did it. Now, now, the, now people are bagging to 42. Jim Ford moved to his house on the banks of the Red River for the views. But today things are looking far more ominous and that has him worried. It's a tremendous concern. It's just a, it's an emotionally uh, trying and exhausting time. But it's a time that's been made easier by the steady hands and open hearts of volunteers. The Concordia people saved us in 1997, and they've been here throughout the week as well in, uh, in one hour shifts. It took more than 40 volunteers, two and a half hours, and 550 of these sandbags to make this dike to protect the Ford's home. We have many friends, but not only friends, but strangers who are willing to give of their time and their muscles uh, to help us. It's, it's, it's just hard to fathom. The daunting work doesn't end outdoors for the Fords. Inside, they've had to move precious family mementos from the basement for safekeeping. Uh, we have pictures, pictures of my, of my home in Wisconsin and my, my parents' lumber and trucking business. Uh, they're all really meaningful. The sandbagging, the shuffling of belongings, it's all a long process that wears on the body and spirit, holding back tears while holding back a relentless flood. We cry about it. Uh, I'm not ashamed to say that. It was hard for me when the Salvation Army truck came by. I mean, we've given to the Salvation Army, you know, every every chance we've been been asked, or for for memorials, for funerals, and things. Yeah. And then think all of a sudden we're on the other side of that. It was very moving uh, for me. Unforgettable memories from an unforgiving spring. Kyle Johnson, Campus News.